Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So SCHD is one of the most popular dividend ETFs on the market for good reason. It's the gold standard when it comes to the selection methodology as well as the performance for dividend producing assets. You're looking at a list of the most popular dividend ETFs on the market filtered by assets under management. And SCHD is third right behind VIG and VYM, which represents dividend growth and high yield respectively. And the reason why I'm even talking about this right now is because SCHD just had its yearly reconstitution and it adds 14 new stocks and eliminates 13. So in case you didn't know, SCHD's index both rebalances and reconstitutes its holdings the second Friday in March every single year, and that just happened. And right here is a list of the changes. So here are the names that have been dropped from SCHD, and these are the new additions. And right off the bat, you're gonna notice that a lot of these changes are minor. So H&R Block has a weight of 0.15%. But both the largest new addition, as well as the largest subtraction, are somewhat significant at 1.91% and 2.32%. So we're going to take a deeper dive into those names in a second. But first, I think it's important to do a quick refresher on how SCHD is constructed. You can see here some of the major screens are 10 consecutive years of dividend payments, as well as a lot of financial ratios down here. And this right here, the financial ratios, in my opinion, is what really helps to make SCHD what it is. I'm especially a big fan of the five-year dividend growth rate as being a major factor. And comparing SCHD against its peers, this is VYM's approach. So VYM has a comparatively lax dividend screen. Firms are ranked by the forecast dividends over the next 12 months. Those in the top half are selected. The stocks that make the cut are weighted by market cap rather than dividends. And that's basically it for VYM. It's not that complicated. It's very passive in nature. And VIG, the leading dividend ETF in the market right now, isn't that much different. So the fund specifically selects US listed firms that have increased their dividend payments for the past 10 years, while excluding the top 25% highest yielding companies. Holdings are market cap weighted with individual security weights capped at 4%. So again, a pretty simple approach. And if we take a look at the past five year price performance of these three leading dividend ETFs side by side, this is what it looks like. SCHD in blue and VIG in light blue here have definitely done a lot better than VYM over this time period. Although I do wanna point out that largely with the exception of VIG here, SCHD and VYM are basically right back at their all time highs they really didn't suffer a major correction like most other equities in the market over the past three months. But when you talk about income producing assets, you can't forget about the income. That's a major source of the return and that's not being reflected in these charts. So the dividend data for SCHD is a yield of 2.61% with a growth rate of around 12% per year. If you look at the same data for VYM, their dividend yield right now is 2.33% with a much lower dividend growth rate. And finally, for VIG, the dividend yield is very similar to the overall market at 1.71%, and the growth rate is also similar to the overall market at 9%. So factoring all that into the total return, this is the CAGR since 2016 for each of these funds. And now we can see the gap between all these is a lot less. VYM still is the lagger of the group, although not by as much. And the total return of SCHD actually does edge out VIG because of the significantly higher dividend yield. And then down here, we have the annual dividend income produced by each ETF. And again, SCHD has the clear advantage here. Okay, so even though SCHD isn't the most popular, it definitely is one of the best performing dividend ETFs on the market. And that's why these most recent changes are so important. Even if you don't directly invest in SCHD, still taking a look at their holdings, what they get rid of, what they add, can be really insightful. And again, I do want to reiterate that most of these changes are pretty minimal, but the number one add and the number one drop are a bit more consequential, so let's take a look at those. So the biggest new addition is EOG Resources, and this is an oil and gas exploration company. And due to that, over the past one year, the stock is up 70%, and the P ratio is still just under 10. And we know that the financial strength of a company is very important for SCHD, so let's take a look at this right now. So we can see here that the top line revenue of this company is pretty good, it's growing, it's not super consistent, but it generally does have an upwards trend. And considering the macro environment of the space right now, I'm sure this number is going to increase in the coming years. 
that growth in top line income is also being nicely translated to their net income. And coming over to the balance sheet, if we look at the cash on hand and compare that versus their long term debt, this tells us that the company is currently in a pretty strong financial position. And finally, in terms of the dividend, the yield is 2.4%, which is very respectable. The payout ratio is only 23%, and the growth rate is very high. And I think this data right here is the primary reason this company is being added to SCHD. Now, long term, considering the move to green and renewable energy, who knows if this is going to be a good investment. But over the next one, two, three years, I'm sure this company is going to do very well. And that's why it's being added to SCHD with a weighting of 2.32%. Now, in terms of the biggest company being dropped, that's Emerson Electric. This company is an electrical components and equipment manufacturer, and over the past one year, it has modest price appreciation of 10%. And taking a deep dive into the financials, I gotta say, they actually don't look that bad. They do have a modest amount of top-line revenue growth. The net income is also at the highest level it's ever been. Their payout ratio is more than the previous company, but it's pretty healthy at around 50%. They do have more long-term debt currently than they have cash on hand, but it's not a huge discrepancy. And finally, here's their dividend data. They have a yield just over 2% and a growth rate of 1.33%. So altogether, this data isn't great, but it's also not bad. I think the main reason this company is being dropped is simply because of the opportunity cost in holding it. There's just simply better companies on the market to be investing in, like the one we just saw. I don't think this company is at risk of going bankrupt anytime soon, but a yield of 2% and a growth rate of 1% really isn't that impressive. So there you have it, guys. Those are the major yearly changes for SCHD, one of the most popular and one of the best performing dividend ETFs on the market. If you guys enjoyed the video, got something out of it, and are still watching, Watching. I appreciate a like on the video, even subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, and I greatly appreciate all the support. But regardless, I'll see you guys in the next one.